I wanted to talk to you today about the cage system, why I think it's really good. Uh, we're going to compare it to the other systems which people uh, adhere to, uh, each of which has their merits, but I think when you're starting out that less is best and I know from having explored these other systems that you can spend a lot of time trying to get them down it's easy to lose sight of why you're doing it someone says you got to learn seven positions of each scale you've got to learn uh, six positions um, you got to learn how to play each scale in every position on the net trapped pretty easily um, chasing after this goal which isn't really a musical goal it's a guitaristic goal and uh, I really think if you're learning how to improvise you're learning how to be a great musician that worrying too much about these guitaristic things uh, can lead you down dead end street. There's obvious merit to grappling with the instrument. It's something that we every instrumentalist has to deal with. This is the, um, the machine, the tool that you're going to use to express yourself. So to deal with the, uh, the problems and the mechanics of the instrument and really overcome them is a really important hurdle but I've got to ask you a question why would you make it harder for yourself than you have to now I'm gonna go straight to the bottom of the list and we're gonna look at the 12 position system now this is um, set out in the Berkeley guitar books and I think there is a definite benefit in exploring this but I will say that guys like Wes Montgomery, Grant Green, Joe Pass, all my favorite guitar players, Pat Martino, they didn't use one uh, fingering per uh, position, giving you 12 fingerings. It's just too much information. Now if I was to start, um, let's say I start here, can't go up, up to the full octave there. In fact, the first position that I can go a full octave in this uh, register is here. So, if I wanted to move up to the next position, which will be the sixth position, that's fifth, now I have to go... Okay, sounds the same to me. Seventh position still sounds the same. Eighth position still sounds the same to me. I changed position there, so really we should go if we were going to stay in position. We'd go there. Now, this is tenth position. still sounds pretty pretty similar to me so you can see where I'm going with this why are you learning all this extra information it's just gonna sound the same now I spent years with this method 
thinking that, you know, I could play anything that I wanted in any position on the net. Then I realized that maybe, maybe that was not the way that um, most guitar players that I really enjoyed listening to were playing. Now, if you use uh, seven, there's a seven position fingering where you start each uh, on each note of the major scale. Yeah, there might be some validity in that. Um, but that's still two more positions than I think you need to cover the whole neck. Now, you probably don't even need that many, to be honest. You can probably start with two and really start making some pretty cool music, just really knowing two positions well. Is it going to be better? There's another question. To learn two positions well and be able to make good music with them, or to learn seven or six or twelve and kind of know them, but not really. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave you to answer that. So the cage system, and the reason why I think it's really good, and what I do, is everyone knows these basic bar chord shapes. Now here's the G1, which isn't used so much. There's the E shape, and the D shape. Now, one of the criticisms of the cage system is that it's aptly titled, it's a cage. Very hard to break out of. But, what I do, and what I recommend you do, is reduce it down to just the root notes. So if we take this voicing and we have just the root notes, we get left with that. That chord, just the root notes, we're left with that. This one, we end up with the lower, sorry, <laughs> the lower octave there and the higher octave there. And here, lower octave there, higher octave there. And then in the D shape, we're left with that one. Now, the cool thing about that, and we're not going to look at that at this right now, but if you want to do other tonalities, other types of scales, um, other chords, arpeggios, that kind of thing. These are these really convenient, what I'd call hand handles or hangers to hang your material on. And if I want to do uh, a major third up from any of those, I can look at that. I can, if I'm there, I can do this or that. so forth. All I need to do to create whatever sounds that I want is I need to know two things. I need to know where is the root note of the tonality that I'm playing on. Is it the chord of the moment or maybe we're just thinking more in terms of the key center. Then I need to know the structure of the sound that I want to hear. If it's a major third Maybe I want to go major third, nine, fifth. So wherever I am on the neck, uh, major third, nine, fifth. I just need to know where my root notes are and I can orient myself to that sound. I hope that makes sense. Major third, nine, fifth. So, I don't know about you, but I don't really think that there's that far to jump between these positions. There's only, there's only these five shapes, and we can get the whole neck covered. obvious advantage in that. Now, by all means, if you want to go ahead and you feel you've got a handle on um, these five basic positions uh, and you can use them, you can be musical, sure, go ahead and explore these other possibilities because they might make sense to you. Um, but I think that for a start, really, really, you want to 
get the least amount of material down that you need to start being musical, to start being creative, to start developing your ear, to start having fun playing music, which to me it's, it's all about having fun, it's about expressing what's in your heart and soul uh, to the world, and that's where it's at, baby. Um, so, I'm going to sign out there, and I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, little loop <laughs> that's been going while I've been talking, as I've sure enjoyed um, talking over it and playing over it. And maybe to finish off, I'm just going to play over it a little bit more and uh, explore the sweet sound of C major 7. Thank mm-hmm. you.